Trump has outlined his aggressive agenda for the second presidential term, where he talked about going against the 14th Amendment and, uh, well, in other circumstances, creating a constitutional crisis. But in this circumstance, no constitutional crisis will most likely happen, considering the Supreme Court is entirely bought out by Trump loyalists uh, who will advance his white nativist anti-immigrant project. He has said that he is going to revoke birthright citizenship. Transition. The president-elect sat down for his first TV interview since the election, outlining an aggressive agenda starting on day one. Trump has pledged to impose tariffs on China and a 25 percent tariff on all goods imported from Mexico in Canada. But some economists say it would cost American families more than $2,600 a year. And on immigration, Trump confirming his plan for mass deportations, starting with convicted criminals, but ultimately saying they could include any immigrants in the country illegally. Trump confirming his plan to try to end birthright citizenship on day one, even though it's enshrined in the 14th Amendment, suggesting he may try to amend the Constitution. And when it comes to his campaign promises to seek revenge against his opponents, Trump says he will not direct his administration to pursue. One is the kids in cages guy. Yeah, now he has another better solution, I guess, uh, a more, a less violent solution, which is mass deportation of the children and the parents. That's what he's saying. He's like, we're going to keep the families together. We're just going to deport them together. We're going to put them in the concentration camps together and then deport them together. Two political prosecutions, suggesting he will leave such decisions up to his attorney general and FBI director. I'm really looking to make our country successful. I'm not looking to go back into the past. I'm looking to make our country successful. Uh, retribution will be through success. But he is also lashing out at members of the House committee that investigated his role in the January 6th attack on the Capitol, calling out former Congresswoman Liz Cheney, saying they should all be imprisoned. For what they did. Yeah. Wait, who did he say she go? Oh, he's, oh yeah, he said Liz Cheney and them should go to jail for committee the crimes that, that they committed against the January 6ers investigated his role in the January 6th attack on the Capitol, calling out former Congresswoman Liz Cheney, saying they should all be imprisoned. For what they did, yeah. honestly, they should go to jail. Now, Liz Cheney overnight responding to Trump's comments, calling them an assault on the rule of law. Trump. I mean, just, you know, sometimes he throws us a bone, you know what I mean? This is like the locker up conversation around uh, <laughs> locker up conversation around Hillary Clinton. Got me saying rule of law. Also said he would work to pardon the January 6th rioters as soon as day one. And he still will not concede that he lost the 2020 election, even when pressed to do so in an effort to bring the country together and move forward. Robin. All right. Our thanks to you, Mary. President-elect Donald Trump, welcome back to Meet the Press. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for being here. You are this the, is the interview. first president since Grover Cleveland to win non-consecutive terms. Mm -hmm. Republicans now have control of the House and the Senate. Do you still have confidence in Pete Hexeth? Yes, I do. I really do. He's a very smart guy. And he's basically a military guy. I mean, I've, every time I talk to him, all he wants to talk about is the military. He's a military guy. I used to kid him about it. I didn't think we'd be in this position where he may be, hopefully will be Secretary of Defense. But um, every time I was with him, he was fighting for soldiers, where he said some soldier was unjustly put in prison because they were really doing what they were taught to do, in some cases. So, uh, yeah, I think he's going to do fine. The fact that <clears throat> there are these allegations against him, misconduct, sexual misconduct, heavy drinking, the fact that he said to some senators reportedly he'll stop drinking if he gets this job, yeah. does that worry you? No, I, I think that uh, every... Check peace tattoos, bro, we know. Check what he has said about Muslims. He is a f***ing psycho. And by the way... His interactions with Trump that were successful revolve around him getting Eddie Gallagher off, a war criminal so bad that his own unit was f***ing up the sights on his goddamn scope so he couldn't successfully assassinate children. Do you know how difficult it is to investigate a decorated troop for war crimes? Successfully in the American military? Are you kidding me? He literally stabbed a f detained ISIS 16 year old to death while he was apprehended straight up war crime like that is you, you might not agree with it. you be like oh he's ISIS who gives a f but like it's a literal war crime you cannot do that yeah his unit reported him because they were afraid of him but Pete Hegseth went to Donald Trump and was like you have to pardon this guy and you have to give him his medals back and Trump was like sure 
say no more. Gallagher was accused of multiple offenses during his final deployment in Iraq and uh, during the battle for Mosul. The most prominent accusation, the best attested to, was the murder of a prisoner of war, a war crime. Khaled Jamal Abdullah, a captured 17-year-old fighter of the Islamic State, was being treated by a medic. According to two SEAL witnesses, Gallagher said, he's mine, over the radio, then walked up to Abdullah and allegedly proceeded to stab him with his hunting knife without explanation. Gallagher and his commanding officer, Lieutenant Jake Portier, then posed for photographs of them standing over the body with some other Navy uh, nearby SEALs. Gallagher then text messaged a friend in California a picture of himself holding the dead captive's head by the hair with the explanation, good story behind this, got him with my hunting knife. Prosecutors alleged that Gallagher's sniper work during his 2017 deployment became reckless and bloodthirsty. It's not prosecutors alleging this. It was his own unit that revealed this information to the prosecutors to a higher up he was such a f rapacious sociopath so bloodthirsty that his own unit was like nah this is too much a literal serial killer he allegedly fired his rifle far more frequently than other snipers according to testimony the other snipers in the platoon did not consider him a good sniper and he took random shots in the buildings other snipers said they witnessed gallagher taking at least two militarily pointless shots shooting and killing an unarmed elderly man in a white robe as well as a young girl walking with other girls Gallagher allegedly boasted about the large number of people he had killed, claiming he averaged three kills a day over 80 days, including four women. A charge of obstruction of justice was brought against Gallagher for alleged witness intimidation. According to the claim, Gallagher allegedly threatened to kill fellow SEALs if they reported his actions. The Navy cited his text messages attempting to undermine the investigation. So all of that aside, they still were able to get him on some of this stuff. This is just like the tip of the iceberg. And no, he was not found innocent. He had to be pardoned by Donald Trump. Anyway, Pete Hexith also famously is a he sexually assaulted a woman who was inebriated and could not consent, uh, was drugged and could not consent, and it was reported as such in the police report that was filed at the time. He packed it up by, uh, you know, settling out of court, giving money to this person, this victim. Pete Hexit was such an obvious abuser that his own mom sent him an email. Pete Hexit's mother accused her son of mistreating women for years is not a lie. You can't say that's a lie. That literally happened. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, and then she said, no, 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 he's different now. He's changed. On behalf of all the women, I, I know as many, you have abused in some way, I say, get some help and take an honest look at yourself, Penelope Hexit Roth, stating that she still loved him. She also wrote, I have no respect for any man that belittles, lies, cheats, sleeps around, and uses women for his own power and ego. You are that man and have been for years. And as your mother, it pains me and embarrasses me to say that. But it is the sad, sad truth. This is crazy. Like disappointing your own mother is like, is is a generational L. Anyway, also Pete Hexit is a, fa is a notorious adulterer and a notorious drunk as well. Incredible stuff overall. But I wanna delve into one of your signature promises on the campaign trail, which was to end inflation, to lower prices. You are now proposing tariffs against the United States, three biggest trading partners. Economists of all stripes, say that ultimately consumers pay the price yeah, of tariffs. I don't believe Can you it. guarantee American families won't pay more? I can't guarantee anything. I can't guarantee tomorrow. But I can say that uh, if you look at my, just pre-COVID, we had the greatest economy in the history of our country. And I had a lot of tariffs on a lot of different countries, but in particular China, we took in hundreds of billions of dollars and we had no inflation. Uh, in fact, when I handed it over, they didn't have inflation for a year and a half. They wanted almost two years just based on on what I had created, and then they created inflation with energy and with spending too much. So uh, I think we will, I'm a big believer in tariffs. I think tariffs are the most beautiful word. I think they're beautiful. It's gonna make us rich. We're subsidizing. That's not how anything works, but it's okay. Again, prices did go up on some goods in your first administration, washing machines, tires. Will you punish oh, CEOs? Oh, oh. Let, let me just explain to you. No, you mentioned washing machines. So you look at Whirlpool in Ohio. I got a call from Jim Jordan, one of the greats, congressman from Ohio. And he said, they're going out of business because South Korea and China are dumping washing machines into our country. And I put a 50% tariff on the washing machines coming in from China and South Korea. They're dumping it. <laughs> they're dumping the washing machines. Korea and Whirlpool and the companies that made washing machines, which are based in Ohio, largely based in Ohio, went through the roof. We saved thousands of jobs, tens of thousands of jobs. They were all going out of business because they were dumping washing machines. And when I put the tariffs on, they became successful. Okay, that is an example, and I don't know uh, how successful this was, and I think it still ends up uh, rising, uh, it still ends up raising the cost, but that is an example of a directed tariff for a competitive manufacturing business that already exists in the United States of America. But that's not necessarily a bad trade protectionist policy. This is, 
exactly what I mean when I say there are certain ways of doing tariffs that I'm not going to uh, disagree with off the jump. However, broad tariffs to 55% of all trade, like to our three top three trade partners across the board is insane. <laughs> it will it will destroy the American economy because there are like raw materials that we simply do not have in the United States of America, for example, that we need to get from elsewhere. I say this as someone who obviously, as you guys know, uses American manufacturing in my garments. These are union hands that touch the shirt that I'm currently wearing and many others that you can purchase at ideology.shop. However, even in that situation, there are probably certain products in the garments manufacturing business that they are still getting from Canada or Mexico or China, like wool. You know what I mean? In that process, the price of uh, the, the garments that they're manufacturing in the United States of America will still increase. My point is, even if even if someone is using American manufacturing, it will still drive up the cost of goods if there's like broad across the board tariffs. Successful businesses. No, it didn't. Not only didn't it cost people, uh, it made our country stronger and more powerful and it kept jobs. But how do you make sure that consumers don't wind up paying more? Will you punish CEOs who try to pass the cost of tariffs onto their customers? Well, the market's going to take care of it. I mean, actually, the market takes care of it. And if it doesn't, we adjust it somewhat. But in the case of Whirlpool or, let's say, companies that made washing machines, they were all being put out of business by the dumping from, in particular, South Korea and China. And when I put the tariffs on, very substantial tariffs, although peanuts compared to what people do to us, what countries do to us, uh, it became a very, very powerful, successful uh, company. Now, let's say I didn't do the tariffs. It would have gone out of business. You would have lost, lost tens of thousands of jobs. And you don't include that in your equation. No, they make a lot of money. China bans exports to the United States of gallium, germanium, antimony, and other key high-tech materials. So that means we can get it ourselves from our own USA ground slash dirt. Stop relying upon China and foreign countries. Andy Thomas is going to... He's going to find it, dude. That's right. You don't understand it, Xi. Xi Jinping, you're on notice. I'm going to make this chip with American dirt. <laughs> Oh, uh, wait until he learns who refines the metals they dig out of American dirt. No, I'll refine it with my bare hands. <laughs> and he's a prospector. Tariffs are going to help us pay off $35 trillion in debt. Tariffs are going to make our country safe because China, as an example, doesn't want to play games with us if we're going to do tariffs on them. They don't want to play games. And we have a lot of games being played on us right now. Well, I think, and that takes me to my next question. Yeah. Are you actually going to impose these tariffs or are they a negotiating tactic? Well, I'll give you an example. Uh, with Canada, and in particular Mexico, we have millions of people pouring into our country. You agree with that? Uh, I spoke with Wait, the does she? both. I spoke with. The does she agree with that? <laughs> you agree with that? Canada, millions of people are pouring in from Canada. <laughs> I don't know if she agrees with that. Justin Trudeau. In fact, he flew to Mar-a-Lago uh, within about 15 seconds after the call. And yeah. he was uh, at Mar-a-Lago. We were having dinner, talking about it. Uh, I said, you have to close up your borders because they're coming in the northern border too a lot. Not like the southern border, but they're coming in the Canadian border a lot. And drugs are pouring in. Almost as importantly, drugs are pouring in. Maybe more importantly, drugs are pouring in at levels never seen before. Ten times. I do respect him committing to the bit because, like, I used to make these memes about, like, you know, shut off the northern border and stuff. And, like, he is, it seems like he's committed to that too. Snow Mexico, you're on notice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how he arrived at this, but like, it is pretty funny that he wants to shut off the Canadian border. Respect. He's, uh, he's morally consistent. And so my question for you is now that you are going back to the White House for these 19 states that voted for you, are you going to raise the federal It's a very low wage? number. I, I will agree. It's a very low number. Let me give you the downside, though. Yeah. In California, they raise it up to a very high number. Mm. And your restaurants are going out of business all over the place. Uh, the is it? Huh. I mean, I don't know. I, what the f*** do I know? I live here. <laughs> that's crazy. I don't think that's the case, man. <laughs> I feel Population like is just... shrinking. It's had a very negative impact. But there is a level at which you could do it. Yeah, yeah. No, people are escaping California because... The people are escaping California because of minimum wage increased. And not because... The cost of living is insane, specifically real estate, you know, the one thing that everyone is universally angry about. But of course, he is a real estate developer, so obviously he's not going to do anything about that. Let's talk about mass deportation, one okay. of your big agenda items. You've talked about prioritizing people who have criminal histories. Correct. But is it your plan to deport everyone? Well, I think you have to do it. And it's a, it's a very tough thing to do. 
it's, um, but you have to have, you know, you have rules, regulations, laws. They came in illegally. You know, the people that have been treated very unfairly are the people that have been online for 10 years to come into the country. And we're going to make it very easy for people to come in in terms of they have to pass the test. They have to t be able to tell you what the Statue of Liberty is. They have to tell you a little bit about our country. They have to love our country. They can't come out of prisons. We don't want people that are in for murder. So we had 11,000 and 13,000 different estimates, 13,099 uh, murderers released into our country over the last three years. Uh, they're walking down the streets, they're walking next to you and your family, and they're very dangerous. The 13,000 figure, I think, goes back about 40 it, years. No, it doesn't. No, that it's within the three-year period. It's during the Biden term. No, that That's not true. She's right. He's wrong. <laughs> nothing matters. Literally nothing matters. It, it just doesn't matter. There is no reason to ever conduct a fact check, a fact check of any sort here. He has a platform. He is the next president, and his fans don't give a f they're like, nah, you're lying. Your fake news is bullshit. What do I always say? Narrative is more important than the truth. And this is yet another clear indication of that, where there is no reason to investigate any further. Whatever he says goes. And this happens in uh, obviously like even daily silliness that that uh, we experience here on this broadcast like this has become a a not necessarily like a right-wing phenomena but just like something that happens over and over again from uh very limited and and tiny and rather inconsequential experiences that tiny and inconsequential experiences that people have on a day-to-day -day basis all the way up to the mother president people just do it against people that they don't like but you're saying something sir that's significant i just i just want to make sure i'm clear which is that you're saying yes you're going to focus on the people with criminal histories but everyone who's here illegally has to go i'm saying, saying this we have to get the criminals out of our country we have to get people that were taken out of mental institutions and put them back into their mental institution no matter what country it is do you know that venezuela their prisons are are at the lowest point in terms of emptiness that they've ever been they're taking their people out of those prisons by the like this is also a falsehood like i i don't know i don't know why he says this all the time it's just another thing that he just says the thousands and they're drunk and just to get back because i know exactly what you're getting at number one we're doing criminals and we're going to do them really rapidly we're getting the Worst gang probably with MS-13 and the Venezuelan gangs are the worst in the world. They're vicious, violent people. And you see what they've done in Colorado and other places. They're taking over, literally taking over apartment complexes. And they just are, they're in the real estate business. You know, the okay. local police say they're not, that is not the case in Colorado. Oh, it's totally the case. I mean, I they, have You don't believe the local police. I play it. I used to play it at my rallies every single night. No, it was, they're breaking into doors. They're taking over the building. But, sir, you, you raised the, the point. the police, the yeah. police are afraid to do anything. You, you raised the point. <laughs> also not true. But it doesn't matter. You said yourself, are, you would but need everything's 24, Yeah, you I mean, you need 24 times more ICE detention capacity just to deport 1 million people per year, not to mention more agents, more judges, more planes. Is it realistic to deport everyone who's here illegally? You have no choice. Illegally? First of all, they're costing us a fortune. But we're starting with the criminals, and we got to do it. And then we're starting with others, and we're going to see how it goes. Who are the others? Others are other people outside of criminals. We have convicted murders. We don't mean people that are even on trial. What about dreamers, sir? Dreamers who were brought to this country illegally as children. You said once back in 2017, they, quote, shouldn't be very worried about being deported. Should they be worried now? Um, the dreamers are going to come later. And we have to do something about the dreamers because these are people that have been brought here at a very young age. And many of these are middle-aged people now. They don't even speak the language of their country. And you want them to be able to stay. That's what you're saying. I do. Okay. I want to be able to work something out. And it should have been able to be worked out over the last three or four years. Let me ask you about another group of people, the estimated four million families in America who have mixed immigration status. So I'm talking about parents who might be here illegally, but yeah. the kids are yeah. here legally. Your borders You're are talking Tom about Holman. separation. Yeah, well, I mean, there are two aspects to this. Your borders are Tom Homan said they can be deported together. Correct. Is that the plan? Well, that way you keep the well. I don't want to be breaking up families. So the only way you don't break up the family is you keep them together and you have to send them all back. Even kids who are here legally? Well, well, what you're going to do if they want to stay with the father? Look, we have to have rules and regulations. Help us make sense of this. He's just saying he's going to do mass deportations with the children uh, in tow. Yes, Trump did initially give uh, Venezuelan TPS before the 2020 election to win their support. Yes, he did. He added an extra round of TPS uh, extensions to the Venezuelans specifically uh, in, the, uh, in the lead up to the 2020 election. This is correct. He hates them now. And in the end, look, our country is a mess. We have the highest crime rate, and during the debate, a man whose ratings have gone way down, David Muir, said to me, no, crime is, because I had to debate three people, not one. Debating one was easy. Debating three was actually pretty easy, too, if you want to know the truth. But David, David Muir said, 
the crime rates have gone down. I said, no, they've gone up. And then the following day, they released the crime rates and they were way up. Yeah, and the FBI up. Statistics, Wait. statistics, sorry. You're talking about those FBI yeah. statistics. Well, no, but he are... gave... no, that's not correct. No, crime is still down. They literally have not gone up. Crimes that are conducted by undocumented immigrants are just so marginal, so inconsequential in the grand scheme of things. It is ridiculous. As a matter of fact, migrants are, as I always repeat, over and over again, more of it is unreported. That is not true. You are wrong. <laughs> no, there are statistics for that as well. There's data for that as well. Okay, there's a National Crime Victimization Survey. And even that does not have like a, a, a massive bump. The idea that even if there were additional unreported crimes that are ongoing, the notion that they are conducted and committed by undocumented migrants who are just secretly so good at evading the authorities somehow is ridiculous. It's just pure racism. You just made that up. Natural born citizens are responsible for a higher rate of crime than undocumented uh, uh, Americans are. Okay. It's ridiculous. Coming in illegally. Yeah, that's the, that's the cope. Coming in illegally is automatically crime. So is jaywalking dumb. During the period of chattel slavery, having slaves was not a crime, but uh, helping escaped slaves uh, uh, find freedom was a crime. Does that mean that automatically it was correct? It was morally righteous? This is a dumb fucking bullshit thing to say. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about murders. He has said undocumented immigrants are causing murders, hundreds of thousands of murders. The idea that like you would compare that to illegal entry into a country when the only thing that actually could fix that problem is paperwork is ridiculous. If something can be fixed by paperwork, if they are not actually constituting a serious threat, a serious national security threat, and the only crime is that they don't have fucking paperwork, the proper paperwork, then yeah, that's ridiculous. The actual number in the fiscal year of 2024 is like what 29 for homicide and manslaughter which includes like literally car accidents okay not just like directly doing gruesome acts of murder but like simply being involved in a uh, vehicular manslaughter situation drunk driving shit like that oh that's one too many well that's an idiotic fucking assessment that's not how people legislate that's not how you're supposed to legislate you can't just be like well i only care about the crimes you're basically admitting that you don't care when like american citizens do crimes you only care when an undocumented migrant does it no matter how small that number is no matter how marginal that number is it is an idiotic way to try to solve a problem it's pointing to a person lighting a match inside of a house that is already on fire and being like oh what the f what are you doing you lit a match excuse me chris yeah we don't have to separate families yeah. we'll send the whole family very humanely back to the country where they came that way the family is not separated so no more family separations you're not reviving well, it depends the on the tolerance family policy. the family may decide to say i'd rather have dad go but and we'll stay here and in which case they have that option. But you're not going to revive your zero tolerance policy, which was put in place as a deterrent. Is there any universe where you would bring that back, sir? We need deterrence. Look, ready? When somebody comes here illegally, they're going out. It's very simple. When they come here illegally, they're going out. Now, if they come here illegally, but their family is here legally, then the family has a choice. The person that came in illegally can go out or they can all go out together. So, but and I, that was made very clear by Tom Holman. So you're not at this point. Oh, he wants to deport not just the undocumented migrants, but their documented family members as well. He's like, you can go with them if you want. Nice. Does Benji know that a lot of illegal immigrants actually enter the U.S. legally? Uh, I doubt it. 52% of migrants that are undocumented on U.S. soil actually come in uh, with a visa. They're visa overstayers. One of the most famous examples of this is obviously Elon Musk. Elon Musk was in violation of his visa uh, when he dropped out of, uh, I believe, Stanford and lied on his forms as well. So I guess I will make one exception for deportation. We satiate the thirst that the masses have for this uh, rather cruel practice. And then, you know, win-win for everybody. We rid the nation of the scourge of Elon Musk. And we also forcibly seize all of his wealth. I say that's a good idea. Nationalize all of his industries, all of his businesses. He broke the law! USA! USA! I'm Dark Maga! <laughs> USA!